All right, so 1994's The Santa Claus is directed by John Pasquin, written by Leo Benvenuti and Steve Rudnick, starring fellow Michigander Tim Allen as Scott Calvin. We also have Judge Reinhold as Neil, Wendy Crewson as Laura, we have Eric Lloyd as Charlie, and David Krumpholtz as Bernard. And uh, what can I say about this movie? It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I love this movie. It's... One of my favorite Christmas movies, I should say. Is it one of my like top 10 favorite movies of all time? No, but this is a movie I rewatch every year around Christmas. And yes, I'm going to be watching a lot of movies around Christmas time and reviewing them. Uh, I would have added this movie, but the new series is coming out on Disney Plus soon, The Santa Clauses. Uh, I will actually be reviewing that in a few days. Uh, I believe it comes out on the 16th, and on the 16th, I will be posting my review for the Santa Claus 3, the Escape Clause, and then the day after it comes out, I will be posting my review for the first two episodes. So this is the beginning in a series of kind of Santa Claus related reviews. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is one of my favorite Christmas movies. I rewatch this movie every single year around Christmas time. Um, so you know I had to rewatch these these films in preparation excuse me, for the series. But uh, yeah, as I said before, Tim Allen is a Michigander, uh, which is what people from Michigan call themselves, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it, it's cool to see him in this movie as Santa Claus. Um, he starts off as kind of a douchebag. Um, and obviously this review is not for kids after saying that, but uh yeah, he starts off as a douchebag, not very, not very good dad. Uh, definitely, you know, he has an ex-wife, so you know that things didn't end too well there. And he's just kind of a selfish, narcissistic kind of guy. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how he starts off. And the thing I love about the movie is just how he completely changes, um, even though things are, are down on him. And even though he wants to quit, he still... Picks up his duties as Santa Claus because he doesn't want to let down all the kids in the world. Um, it's sweet. And this does tug at my heartstrings, especially towards the end of the movie. Uh, the line where Charlie... And, I mean, I'm getting into spoilers here, but it's a Christmas movie that came out in 1994. So it's been out for a while. And if I'm spoiling a Christmas movie, does it really matter that much? I don't know. That's just my, my personal opinion. But... Yeah, um, <clears throat> towards the end there, Charlie has a line where he says, I love you, Santa Claus, and I'm, oh my god, every time I watch this movie and he says that line, that makes me cry, um, and then when Laura, his ex-wife, finds out, like, or realizes that he is Santa Claus and is just like, oh my god, it's you, that makes me cry, um, I don't know, it's just these kinds of movies that, that make you feel good around the holiday season and tug at your heartstrings and make you feel happy and warm. And that's just what this movie does for me. Um, it's a very funny movie, too. There's, there's a lot of... And surprisingly, in this movie, he isn't Santa Claus for the whole movie. He isn't in the North Pole for the whole movie. We're probably in the North Pole for maybe like 10, 15 minutes tops in this movie. And... and Maybe not even that. Um, whereas in the second and third films, we spent a lot more time there. But uh, I, I just love the set design, especially for the scenes we are in the North Pole. Uh, the set design there is very creative and very practical for the most part. Um, which, speaking of which, the practical effects in this movie are pretty pretty good. Uh, but the CGI, of course, being in the 90s, most of it is god-awful. Especially... When you have the scenes where, like, the reindeer are kind of going off the roof and starting to, um, starting to fly or whatever. And they, like, go down off the roof and start flying. That looks completely horrible. Just absolutely terrible. Um, there's other, other scenes that the CGI looks horrible in. But, uh, that's all I'll really mention there. Uh, but if you haven't watched this movie, I definitely recommend it in... You know, people might have not have watched this movie because they don't celebrate Christmas. I don't think that matters. Just watch it. It's It makes you feel good. It, it's a fun movie. Tim Mellon is great in the film. 
honestly, everybody in this movie does a really great job. Uh, Wendy Curson, Judge Reinhold, uh, Eric Lloyd, his character, Charlie, the son of Scott Calvin, seems a lot more mature for a kid his age, which they never say his age, but this kid looks under 10 years old, probably between like, I don't know, seven and maybe not even, well, yeah, maybe like seven to nine. Um, so this kid is young as hell and he, he just picks up on things like, you don't like Neil very much, do you? Um, and he has just like so many questions. He's like, what's that? A rose such a clatter. What's that? And then he wakes up with his dad and a rose such a clatter. I, I don't know. Something about the way that that kid talks in the movie. I'm just like, he sounds a lot older than he is, but I don't know. Maybe that's completely irre irrelevant. It probably is. Uh, but for those of you who have seen this movie, you probably remember the Denny scene. Something about the Denny scene in this movie is the thing I remember more than anything else in this whole film. Um, I, I don't know why. I love that scene. Again, just can't explain it. I have no idea why. But that is my one of my favorite scenes in this movie, if not my favorite, is just... You know, Tim Allen burning the turkey and them trying to find a place to go eat. He sits down in the Denny's and then there's like other dads with their kids. And you can tell they're divorced because the wife isn't there. And they're just all sitting there like, yep, how you doing? Burnt the turkey. Yep. And then they're out of everything too. Um, so uh, what was the whole line there? He's like, oh, I'd love a, two glasses of your ice-cold eggnog. And Charlie's like, I don't like eggnog. And the wa waitress is like, we're out. And then he's like, can I have chocolate milk? She's like, oh, we're out. And he says, play milk is fine. She starts walking away. He's like, at least we know they have hot apple pie. And she's like, we did. Oh, my God. <laughs> this scene is fucking hilarious. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, peak comedy, peak comedy. But uh, here's something I heard. I've can't remember where uh but this is a very good quote here you don't go to denny's you end up at denny's and and this film is just showing that so uh but yeah let me see what other notes i have here oh yeah there's some elements in this movie where they talk about santa claus not really being real and talking about how neil's character talked to charlie about how santa is like you know something people just in a way kind of like god it's just, like, something some people choose to believe in, um, whether or not it's real or not. And then, you know, that you have Tim Allen's character saying, of course I believe in Santa and whatnot, but as soon as, uh, as soon as Charlie's character wakes him up, he's like, oh, maybe it's Santa. He's like, Charlie, shut the, shut the fuck up, okay? Uh, this is real man shit. We got, we got an intruder. Um, but also, Charlie was way too excited about the fact that his dad probably killed Santa Claus, because you have Santa on the ground, Tim Allen's standing there. And then Charlie comes out, he's like, you got him. I was like, what the fuck, Charlie? Jesus Christ. Um, if anybody's turning into Jigsaw, because people like to say Kevin McAllister from Home Alone turned into Jigsaw. Now, if anybody's turning into Jigsaw, it is uh, it is Charlie. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but, yeah, maybe they'll be accomplices. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, this movie... Uh, it has some weird elements to it, such as the whole aspect of, you know, because um, Scott Calvin's character, after killing Santa Claus, putting on the outfit, he starts to gain weight, starts to look like Santa Claus, and uh, and Neil and Laura start to think that he's just completely delusional and decides to try and take custody over Charlie. And, uh, yeah, he ends up getting arrested in one spot. He gets out and... Uh, Excuse me. They think that he kidnapped Charlie, and it, it just gets really crazy. They have a whole police line up, and Laura's like, no, it's not any of them. Oh, my God, where's my baby boy? Um, but, yes, it, it gets crazy for sure. And uh, to think it gets crazier in the other movies, at least from what I remember. In the second one, you have, like, a toy Santa, and the third one, you have Jack Frost played by... Uh, Martin Short, right? Is it Martin Short? I think so. Uh, playing playing Jack Frost in that movie, and he basically becomes Santa. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I'll you'll I'll get to that in the other reviews, but yeah, to think it does get crazier than that. But 
I don't know, there, there are some slightly, ever so slightly adult themes in this movie. Uh, well, yeah, there's some hidden adult adult humor as well. There's one scene in particular where Scott is talking to an elf named Judy. And uh, he's like, oh, you're, uh, you look, you look pretty good for your age. Because she said she was like, I don't know, 12, 1200 years old or some shit like that. Because elves, you know, um, and she's like. Oh, I'm flattered, but I'm actually seeing someone. And he's like, okay. I'm just like, ooh, that's a little problematic. They wouldn't get away with that in a movie nowadays. Unless it was, you know, maybe rated R. But, yeah. Um, it's just small things like that where you're like, ooh, yeah. Uh, this is definitely not a movie that was made anytime, at any time near the 2010s on. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, I'm very curious to see where they're going to take the series and what kind of humor they're going to have in there. I'm sure it's going to be a lot more... I don't want to say the first Santa Claus, like this original Santa Claus movie, is not family-friendly, but I have a feeling that the Disney Plus series is going to be even more so, the way they kind of did with Hocus Pocus, making... Hocus Pocus a lot less scary, a lot more family friendly, and I don't know, kind of kind of having a little more heartfelt stuff. I, I I guess you could say I don't know. It's not really the word I'm looking for, but you, you, maybe you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me see if I have any other notes here. I don't think I do. Um, yeah, I think that might be it. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, what does that say there? Oh, hidden adult humor. Last, last little thing I'll give to you here before I, uh, I end this review. Uh, he, this is the scene where he's, uh, the, the, the sack of toys or whatever. He's flying with it. And Charlie's like, dad, you're flying. And he's like, it's okay. I lived through the sixties. And I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of funny to think about considering that Tim Allen got arrested in an airport with, uh, cocaine, I believe, with the intent to sell. Uh, I, I don't re remember the, the exact thing that happened there, but I was just like, ha, 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 that's funny. Uh, I'm pretty sure that happened before this movie came out, too. So this, this, uh, the whole cocaine thing predates this movie. It predates Toy Story. Um, probably predates Home Improvement. I don't know if it predates that, but yeah, uh, just interesting to see how things are different now because nowadays if uh if something like that happened this guy would not go on to be in a disney movie he wouldn't go on to play santa claus he wouldn't go on to uh to play buzz lightyear in an animated movie so it's just inter interesting to see how things have changed over time not only with humor but the way that you know, the the way that we let actors be in certain things and not be in other things, depending on, you know, their publicity and, and what they've done and uh, whether or not they are fit to kind of be in a movie. And you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's a whole lot of that right now. Uh, but yeah, sorry. I'm a little tired if I seem a little slow. Um it's getting late, and also, I have a bit of a cold right now, so not feeling too great, but I did want to come on and make this review for the Santa Claus, because it's one of my favorites, and if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to review it, you know? So, uh, I should be back tomorrow with my review for the Santa Claus, too. Oh, I got to rank it. almost forgot. Uh, you know, it's not the best movie of all time, but I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5 out of 10, just for the... The fact that it was uh, one of my favorites growing up and still one of my favorites now. I rewatch it every Christmas. Uh, this is easily in my top three, top three with Elf and... Excuse me, Jesus. Uh, with Elf... Can't talk. With Elf and Home Alone. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, where I would rank all three of those, but they are in my top three. So, um, yeah, 8.5. I think that's pretty legit, but I would love to know what you guys think. Uh, what would you give this movie if you had to give it a ranking like I did? Uh, if you have seen it, that is. 
And if you haven't seen it, comment down below and tell me if you're planning on watching it this holiday season or watching it before the Santa Clauses comes out. Or uh, tell me if you're going to watch the Santa Clauses. Also interested to, uh, to hear that. Thank you all for watching. As I said, I'll be back tomorrow with my review for the Santa Claus 2. Leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload, and I will see you in the next one.